As of version 1.0.3 in Encode GUI, you have a choice to select one of five video codecs, six audio codecs, and four subtitle codecs. In this video, you will learn how to use each of these codecs effectively and also learn how to define each of their settings. Before we get started, if you're new to Encode GUI, I highly suggest that you watch the introduction video so that you can get a basic understanding of how it works. More specific details of Encode GUI's functions are available on its documentation and the link to that is in the video description. The latest version of Encode GUI as of making this video is version 1.0.5 which is only available to patrons until June 5th. You can find out more details on how to become a patron for Encode GUI early access updates in the video description. The latest free version of Encode GUI is currently version 1.0.3. Let's go ahead and get started. We'll first be taking a look at the video codecs that you have to choose from. You can select the video codec that you want to use for encoding by going to the main tab and then selecting a codec in the video codec drop down menu. The options currently available to you are AVC, HEVC, ProRes, Theora, and VP9. The new AV1 codec is expected to come in a future version of Encode GUI. Once you have selected the video codec, the tab consisting of its settings will appear inside of the video tab. We'll first be taking a look at the AVC codec. The first option you'll want to configure is the encoding mode. Here, you will have four different options. The recommended option is constant rate factor since it's easy to set up and it allows the video to have the highest compression quality. When selecting constant rate factor, you define the quality of the video using the constant rate factor value. The lower the value, the higher the quality. The maximum value is 51 and the minimum is 0. You'll want to set this option to 17 for a visually lossless quality video. For total lossless quality, set this value to 0. The next encoding mode is average bitrate which allows you to specify a specific bitrate and then the encoder will encode the video at around that specified bitrate. The next mode is target bitrate which is a two pass encoding mode meaning that the video encodes twice. It allows you to specify a specific bitrate and then the encoder will do its best to remain at that specified bitrate while encoding. This mode is ideal if you want the video file to be a specific file size. The last encoding mode available here is constant quantizer which is very similar to constant rate factor but it does not consider the visual aspects of the video while encoding which could make it lower quality than the constant rate factor at the same settings. Regardless, you want to set the constant quantizer strength value between 51 and 0 where 0 is total lossless quality. For visually lossless quality, you want to set this value to 16. Now that we know about the encoding modes, we can move on to learn about the hardware encoding option. You only want to use hardware encoding if you have a weak CPU and or you want a much faster encoding experience. There are three hardware encoders that are available in Encode GUI which are NVENC, QuickSync, and AMF. Each of these will show up in the drop down menu if Encode GUI detects that your system has the drivers required for the hardware encoder. Moving on below is the profile and tuning. Both of these are optional parameters. Set the tune according to what type of video your source is. The profile below almost acts as if it is a speed setting for the encoder. You'll want to set this to slow or lower for the best quality video, but keep in mind that the encoding process will also be slow. For a faster, lower quality encode, you'll want to set this to faster, higher. Looking at the profile options, you'll want to enable this if you want to restrict the AVC codec to a single profile or level. You also have the option to set the entropy coder. Neither of these settings are necessary unless you need a specific color depth and or color sampling in the video. In the frames tab next to the main tab, you'll see two options here which are for adjusting the number of B-frame prediction frames and the number of reference frames. These settings, just like the profile and colors, are optional parameters. Moving on to the HEVC codec, the same rules in terms of configuring the settings are going to apply from the AVC codec. The only thing that HEVC adds is the ability to configure HDR metadata which is available in the signals tab. More in-depth details about this feature will be covered in a future video. The next codec is ProRes which is one of Apple's proprietary video codecs and it's best to use if you intend to encode high bit depth videos or videos at high resolution. You'll first want to set the profile and you set this according to the color bit depth and color sampling in your video. For most scenarios, you want to set this to 422. For 12 bit videos in 444 sampling, set this to 4444XQ. The color options below simply set the color space info in metadata and are an optional parameter. Moving on to the Theora codec, there isn't much to explain here as the only option is to set the encoding mode. You'll have two options, the average bitrate, which we explained earlier, and the constant quality option. For constant quality, you can set the value anywhere between 1 and 10, where 10 gives you the best quality video. The recommended value is 7. Lastly is the VP9 codec, which consists of similar compressing quality as HEVC, but has better quality performance on videos with more than 4K resolution. 
The first option to set, once again, is the encoding mode and more information on this can be found in the AVC section of this video. The options on the right side set the profile speed and also the video colors. You'll want to set the profile to simple for most videos and complex for videos in 10-bit colors and or in HDR. And that concludes nearly everything regarding the video codex. Any information not mentioned here or missed can be found in the Encode GUI documentation linked down below in the video description. Now we'll take a quick look at what Encode GUI has to offer for audio encoding. You can set the audio preference that you want by going to the main tab and then selecting either pass through or encode in the drop down menu. Selecting encode will enable the audio tab at the top of the application. Please note that you must have a source video loaded in Encode GUI and that video must consist of at least one audio track in order for the drop down menu to be enabled. To mute all of the audio channels, simply uncheck the audio checkbox. Looking at the settings in the audio tab, you'll first want to select an audio track that you would like to make changes to by selecting the track in the first drop down menu. If you want to apply any encoding settings to the video, such as changing the bitrate or the codec, then you'll have to select the encoding checkbox below. The first option is selecting the audio codec. More details about each audio codec in this list can be found in Encode GUI's documentation linked in the video description below. Below the codex is a spin box that allows you to set the bitrate of the audio. There are bitrate limitations for each audio track on the basis of its codec. Again, more details are in Encode GUI's documentation linked in the video description. Below the bitrate selector is the channel selector which allows you to downmix the audio channels to a lower count. Note that this option will not upscale the number of channels. And lastly is the button to add the selected audio along with all of its settings above to a job in the audio queue located on the right. The first audio track in the list will be the default and all other following tracks in the queue will appear in the same order as you see in the audio job queue in the audio track list when varying the video in, say, a video player. And finally in this guide are the subtitle options. You can select to either pass through the subtitles from the source or use the audio encode feature. The auto encode simply allows Encode GUI to automatically convert the subtitles to a supported codec on the basis of the output video container that you have selected. And this concludes everything regarding the video, audio, and subtitle codecs and defining their settings in Encode GUI. I hope you find everything in this video useful for your needs and if you need to find out more information, you could do so by visiting the Encode GUI documentation linked in the video description. Please also consider becoming a patron for Encode GUI so that you can get early access to updates, priority support, and also a dedicated role in this channel's Discord server. Be sure to also like and subscribe to the channel so that you won't miss the next video for Encode GUI. Regardless, thank you everyone for your support and I'll catch you all next time.